the development of ballistic missile sites in Cuba continues at a rapid pace. Through the process of continued surveillance directed by the President, additional evidence has been acquired which clearly reflects that as of Thursday, October 25th, definite buildups in these offensive missile sites continues to be made. The activity at these sites apparently is directed at achieving a full op operational capability as soon as possible. There is evidence that as of yesterday, October 25th, considerable construction activity was being engaged in at the intermediate ballistic missile range sites. Bulldozers and cranes were observed as late as Thursday actively clearing new areas within the sites and improving the approach roads to the launch pads. Since Tuesday, October 23rd, missile-related activities have continued at the medium-range ballistic missile sites, resulting in progressive refinements at these facilities. For example, missiles were observed parked in the open on October 23. Surveillance on October 25th revealed that some of these same missiles have now been removed from their original park positions. Cabling can be seen running from the missile-ready tents to power generators nearby. In summary, there is no evidence to date indicating that there is any intention to dismantle or discontinue work on these missile sites. On the contrary, the Soviets are rapidly continuing their construction of missile support and launch facilities, and serious attempts are underway to camouflage their efforts. Well, I refer you to the President's speech for uh, any guidance as to what uh, uh, action the President is contemplating. The uh, President has today uh, canceled his uh, trip to Brazil. Uh, the White House has released an exchange of letters uh, with President Goulart of Brazil in which uh, the President expresses his regret at being unable to come, and the two Presidents have agreed to discuss the matter again in January. Well, we announced yesterday the cancellation of the visit to this country uh, by the Grand Duchess of Luxembourg. Uh, those, the trip to Brazil, however, was the only trip uh, still on the docket. The uh, following is the text of uh, President Kennedy's statement of uh, noon. I welcome Chairman Khrushchev's statesmanlike decision to stop building bases in Cuba, dismantling offensive weapons, returning them to the Soviet Union under UN verification. This is an important and constructive contribution to peace. We shall be in touch with the Secretary General of the United Nations with respect to reciprocal measures to assure peace in the Caribbean area. It is my earnest hope that the governments of the world can, with a solution to the Cuban crisis, turn their urgent attention to the compelling necessity for ending the arms race and reducing world tension. This applies to the military confrontation between the Warsaw Pact and NATO countries, as well as to other situations in other parts of the world where tensions lead to the wasteful diversion of resources to weapons of war. Yes, the uh, Executive Committee of the National Security Council began work uh, with the President this morning on the formal answer to Chairman Khrushchev. Uh, we expect to have that answer this afternoon and to make that answer public uh, when it is delivered to the uh, Soviet Embassy here. Well, the President has been uh, to Mass this morning. Uh, he then sat in the meeting of the Executive Committee of the National Security Council. Uh, very shortly, he will leave the White House uh, by helicopter to go to Middleburg, Virginia, to have lunch with Mrs. Kennedy and the children at Glenora. Uh, he will return to the White House this afternoon. The following is the letter which has just been dispatched from the President to Chairman Khrushchev. 
I am replying at once to your broadcast message of October 28th, even though the official text has not reached me, because of the great importance I attach to moving forward promptly to the settlement of the Cuban crisis. I think that you and I, with our heavy responsibilities for the maintenance of peace, were aware that developments were approaching a point where events could have become unmanageable. So I welcome this message and consider it an important contribution to peace. The distinguished efforts of the Acting Secretary General, Utant, have greatly facilitated both of our tasks. I consider my letter to you of October 27th and your reply of today as firm undertakings on the part of both of our governments which should be promptly carried out. I hope that the necessary measures can be at once taken through the United Nations, as your message says, so that the United States in turn will be able to remove the quarantine measures now in effect. I have already made arrangements to report all these matters to the Organization of American States, whose members share a deep interest in a genuine peace in the Caribbean area. You referred in your letter to a violation of your frontier by an American aircraft in the area of the Chukotsk Peninsula. I have learned that this plane, without arms or photographic equipment, was engaged in an air sampling mission in connection with your nuclear tests. Its course was direct from Isleson Air Force Base in Alaska to the North Pole and return. In turning south, the pilot made a serious navigational error, which carried him over Soviet territory. He immediately made an emergency call on open radio for navigational assistance and was guided back to his home base by a most direct route. I regret this incident and will see to it that every precaution is taken to prevent recurrence. Mr. Chairman, both of our countries have great unfinished tasks. And I know that your people, as well as those of the United States, can ask for nothing better than to pursue them free from the fear of war. Modern science and technology have given us the possibility of making labor fruitful beyond anything that could have been dreamed a few decades ago. I agree with you that we must devote urgent attention to the problem of disarmament as it relates to the whole world and also to critical areas. Perhaps now, as we step back from danger, we can together make real progress in this vital field. I think we should give priority to questions relating to the proliferation of nuclear weapons on Earth and in outer space, and to the great effort for a nuclear test ban. But we should also work hard to see if wider measures of disarmament can be agreed and put into operation at an early date. The United States government will be prepared to discuss these questions urgently and in a constructive spirit at Geneva or elsewhere. Signed, John F. Kennedy. Now, the president uh, made it very clear that he did not uh, intend to uh, pursue the political campaign any further, and uh, there will be no change in that decision. The president this morning, uh, following the meeting of the executive committee of the National Security Council, phoned uh, all three of our former presidents uh, to bring them up to date on the situation, uh, to tell them about the message from Mr. Khrushchev, and uh, to give them an indication of the type of message he was sending back to Mr. Khrushchev. Well, I think that uh, the uh, messages that have been exchanged between uh, uh, Mr. Khrushchev and the President speak for themselves. Well, I have no comment of whatever on Mr. Castro's uh, proposals. I think, again, that the letters exchanged by Mr. Khrushchev and the President speak for themselves.